welcome to the Lifetime Training Podcast. I'm Jason Seller, your host, as you know, and I've got the one and only DJ Zma. Jinsky. Got it. Yeah, uh, you got it. There we go. <laughs> had to take a look, man. So, you know, again, part of this podcast series is all about bringing to life some of our, you know, top educator, performers, coaches, and, and just, you know, wanting to, to let people know out there what we have to offer, you know, and how we really, I always say it, how we have a career path that has allowed people to retire in a position in the health and fitness industry without having to really dive into maybe being a general manager. And, and some people want to do that. Um, so, you know, DJ's got a great, great story. Um, he's also a little bit near and dear to me because he's, a, he's an alpha guy um, and he's way stronger than I am. So, uh, you know, DJ, why don't you, you know, just tell us, you know, what got you in the industry and then what brought you to Lifetime? All right. Well, um, growing up, I was definitely always drawn towards health and fitness. I played hockey. I played baseball. I played just about like every sport growing up. Uh, I always used to win like in middle school, like most likely to become a doctor. And I always had that in my head. Like I'm going to be a doctor. Like I really love health. Uh, when I was growing up, I was a little bit overweight. So I used to get made fun of all that. Like I was still very athletic, but I definitely had a little bit of weight to lose. Going into eighth grade, so I was about 13, 14, I ended up losing 20 pounds from dieting, but playing Dance Dance Revolution for <laughs> about 30 minutes to you an hour. You got some TikTok I, moves, man? Come on. <laughs> uh, no, I do not TikTok, but uh, yeah. Uh, okay. See me in Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, okay. yeah you'll, <laughs> nice. there we go. Uh, but yeah, that really um, got me into like just exercise. And I mean, I still played hockey. I still did a lot of sports along the side, which kept me active. But not long after, I started lifting. So freshman year of high school, I fell in love with lifting. My high school weight coach got me into CrossFit. So we used to do a lot of like CrossFit stuff. We used to do a lot of strength and conditioning. And then I also used to do a lot of like bodybuilding stuff with my uncle. He lived like right down the street from my high school. So like on my off days, I would do that. So I basically lifted every day. I was total meathead. Like I would carry around the gallon water jug all day. <laughs> um, but yeah, just throughout high school, I just really fell in love with it. It was mostly just for like hockey performance and just to get better at that. But then in college, I stopped really playing hockey. Like I did it my freshman year, I played club. Um, and then I continued to lift, I, I got really into it. I mean, I continued to do like both aspects of CrossFit as well as aspects of just like the traditional bro split, chest try. So a little bit of everything there. I always kept up with like, internet articles I looked at a lot of like blogs and read a lot of magazines so it was always a passion of mine but it was never really something that I pursued uh, I came in as a, a pre-med going to school because again that whole doctor idea in my head and then I was kind of like I don't really want to do this and I, I, I rethought everything uh, exercise science definitely crossed my mind but I was just like, yeah, I don't really want to do like the whole science, organic chemistry that just didn't really <laughs> appeal to me. So then I ended up doing more of like, I was like, I want to be a lawyer. I had a couple of friends doing that. So I was like, why don't I do that too? And then I did philosophy as my major and classics, uh, which my profession has really not much to do with yeah. anymore. But uh, at the time, I thought that was a great idea. Then fast forward a little bit, finish school. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't really want to be a lawyer. So I coming out, I had no idea what I was going to do. Uh, I basically took a year. I had been working at an ice rink since I was like 14. Um, and then I just ended up just taking that full time. I drove Zamboni and I worked maintenance. So yeah, I did a little <laughs> That's bit That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely a fun experience for a year. And while I was doing that, I was like, you know what? I, I've trained friends. I've trained with a lot of people. I'm good at it. I know a lot. I've done a lot of research on my own. Why don't I pursue fitness as a career? Mm -hmm. So I got certified. And as I was like 
interviewing and looking at places. A guy that I worked with at the ice rink was like, hey, I work out at Lifetime. You should apply here. And they had a career fair going on. Nice. I went in there and I was just like, oh my God, this place is awesome. Like it was huge, biggest fitness facility I had ever seen. And I interviewed and I got the job. So, and you were on there, the East Coast? You started that was, yeah. I was on the East Coast and I was Florham Park, New Jersey. Shout out. Yeah, boy. Great place there. But yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. And, and so you, you end up there and did you jump? you know, kind of right into the, the group side of it, or, you know, what were some of the things that allowed you to, you know, elevate? And then obviously, you know, what was that transition and well, how did you make it from Florham Park, New Jersey to Minnesota? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when I went there, so when I first got there, first thing I saw was the squat racks, Olympic platforms. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. Like I've never seen a gym like this with that kind of stuff. So uh, I fell in love with our alpha program right away, I took some classes. I was like, this is awesome. This is exactly what I want to do. This is exactly like what I've been doing. Uh, and then, I mean, for the first year, uh, we basically had solid instructors. We had everything basically set. We had a pretty decent program going. So there really wasn't much for me to take on. So I mostly like dabbled with personal training. Um, We had to, I had to basically be like an understudy kind of thing. And I I would shadow classes and take classes, but it was about a year before I really started taking or teaching my own classes. Mm -hmm. But it took me about six months to really get on my feet. I mean, I had clients, I was basically like up and running within three months, but um, just Really, and I've learned this starting businesses multiple times. I mean, there's some ups and downs. So it really took me about six months before I really started to get like a solid grasp of what I was doing and get a good schedule. And then about a year before I started teaching classes and really taking off. Um, But like I was saying, I was like an understudy for Alpha Coach as well as our GTC, so our group training coordinator. So I studied under her a little bit, and I always had interest in that. I I developed pretty quickly. I was one of those that everybody always used me as an example. Um, I I was really into like Kelly Starrett and Supple Leopard when that came out. So that was like ahead of its time. I was doing all the weird lacrosse ball things and bands and things that people were like, what is he doing? Like, I never know what he's doing. Over there, but, um, yeah, so I was always innovating. People would always come to me for different things, but I, I grew as a leader right away. And we also had like, we had leadership development courses, which was basically like a book club where we'd have some sort of a book and we'd discuss it. So I, I sharpened my tools that way a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I applied for group training coordinator. And I was like, I'm so ready for this. I'm so going to crush it. And then I didn't get it. So I actually, uh, somebody else who actually at the time was probably a better candidate, but he moved on very quickly. So like he actually was group training coordinator. I think it was only a couple months and then he became a TDM. So an assistant manager, and now he's a personal training manager. So he kind of moved a little faster than I did. My, my, my growth was a little slower. Well, wait, but, before you go on though, and I hate to cut you off, but I think there's so many nuggets in there for trainers. Uh, obviously oh, yes. a lot of this audience is, is, you know, th- there's general population people and, and understanding what it takes to become successful. And then there's the trainers that might be just starting, you know, or, or ones that maybe have been with us and, you know, maybe they're not white, right where they want to be. And, and that's part of, the story that I really want to dive into. So obviously, you know, you mentioned some things in there that I don't think a lot of people when they come into the industry have, and and kind of the thing that came to my mind is a little bit of patience and, Mm -hmm. and the ability to actually go and and take the time to be mentored. Uh, Obviously you said that a couple of times of, you know, uh, being a mentor underneath and and so many people want to just get at it and, and go. And there, there's so much, there's so many skills that are needed, um, you know, and skills take time to develop. And that's the one thing where, you know, in our industry, and I think in general, one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm trying to coach people is that 
especially trainers to be better trainers is, you know, why are you putting an expectation to be good on good at something when you've never actually tried it, when you've never actually practiced it. Um, and then nobody wants to role play, obviously. So, you know, or, or take the time to do that. Um, yeah. and, and it's the best, one of the best ways. So, you know, if you wouldn't mind spending some time, you know, really thinking about and, and, and explaining, like, what was the mindset? Like, where, where did that come from? And, and how did you, you know, what things did you, you know, really take away that allowed you to kind of catapult yourself? Hmm. That's a great question. So mindset, I mean, I've always had sort of like a growth mindset where you want to get a little better every day, but um, basically uh, patience, like you were saying, is a very big part of it. Um, but a lot of it is like humility and not having an ego, kind of putting that to the side. And I, I'm thankful that I did have good leaders that were able to explain like, hey, you might have not gotten it now, but now's the time where we can develop you to get that skill set. So when the time comes, then you'll be even better. And actually, this was actually the next part of the story anyway. Yeah. But after I didn't get the position, we started doing our group training coordinator succession program. So nice. basically, they, they understood that a lot of the roles that we need right now are filled, but these people want to move up eventually or go somewhere else or do something else so that they're developing. So we always have to have some sort of system of succession. So somebody who's going to take that role when they do move up, which end up, ended up happening. And actually from going through that succession program, I actually ended up being a better group training coordinator than this person who may have been a better candidate at the time, yeah. not to take a shot at him or anything, <laughs> I won't name him, but um, I did, I, I basically doubled the program after that. Yeah. So, and, and, and God, you know, there's so many times, you know, I, the, the times that I fell flat on my face and, but then again, you said growth mindset changed that mindset to, to motivate you obviously have a chip on your shoulder. I mean, <laughs> in, in a good way, like you said, and being humble, you know, I, I had this experience with my son, you know, just last year, I wanted to quit the soccer team. And, and next thing you know, we got him a, a goalie coach and, and he busted his ass. And next thing you know, he, he's most likely going to be starting on the varsity this year in the goal. And, and most of the best times come from the worst times. And if, if you can take anything from, you know, what DJ's saying here and is, you know, I'm sure he was pissed off and, you know, he's got a little chip on his shoulder to throw a little shot, which is great. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, same thing, man, when we're down, change that mindset. Why don't let it get to your head. Don't let the ego get to your head, find out. And, and I want to give props to your managers too, because not a lot of cases, especially in our industry. And, and I would even say in, in a lot of the clubs, um, do they take the time to say, these are the things that you weren't good at or, or why you didn't get it. And, and these are the things we want you to work on and then create that succession program. So props to them as well. Yeah, no, they did a great job. Yeah. I think we, well, people that I've worked with, I am going to give a little props to that. I think we've yeah. made that club in particular, there are about five personal training managers that came from that club when, when I worked there. Yeah. So I think we did a really good job with that. But. Well, and, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to be honest when, you know, the first couple of years of that club, I, I grand opened the club uh, and trained everybody, you know, not like I, I came in and trained everybody. It, it had a, a spike and then it, it had a, oh, it, it had some dark days, uh, you know, for yeah. a year or so. Um, so props to that team and the regional out there that, that has been doing yeah. some great stuff. Um, but, but you didn't name anybody. So you got to throw some props out to the people that have helped you. Who, who are they? <laughs> well, number one was uh, Todd, Todd select in. So, yeah. Yeah, he was the one that hired me, brought me on. Uh, Michael Reich. So Mike Reich, he was my next personal training manager. Yep. He did a really good job. Jim Fiorello, who's now a GM. Yep. Oh, he was also really good. Uh, Mark Mackey, he's no longer with the company, but he was a really good manager to me. Um, and then the one that I was talking about, uh, Joe from, uh, what is it? He's at Berkeley Heights now. Got it. So... <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So, if he's listening. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. Hopefully. Yeah. And, and, and so now you're at Florum and how does, uh, how does the conversation happen? How do you get the call or, or, you know, cool. say, Hey, you know, we're going to steal you and, and bring you to the mothership. Yeah. So my first year, 
I we had the national alpha showdown and I qualified. So we had like a kind of like the CrossFit Open where we had which like, one was that? Uh, what? Which one was that? 2014. Where was it at? So that was the one with like um I think it was the one, it was like one rep max bench press. Where was it at though? Oh, it was at Chan. Okay, okay, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that was so 2014 qualified for that went to the chan hassan alpha field so that was yeah. when we still had okay. the alpha field i yep. think that was like right when it yeah first was one built yep but yeah i came in fourth so mr david freeman won that year yep. Yep. I, remember. Um, I just remember the first race i was in <laughs> second place i was neck and neck with this guy uh, and then all of a sudden, just at the very end, David Freeman just comes sprinting out of nowhere and just beats us both. And I'm like, what? He, he's got that killer instinct too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I've but, got some um, great stories on, on the yep. one that we're in, in Atlanta. Yep. Yeah. So that was my first trip to Minnesota. Uh, then I qualified again two years later. So I was there again. Then uh, we had our, uh, what was it? The master alpha certification. So that was when new hope just launched. Yeah. I came out here and I was like, this place is amazing. So I looked at new hope. I was like, we need to get the club in every region. Like, why don't we have more alpha studios? And explain um, that. Cause there, there's people out there that don't know, you know, what that the new hope is, is basically a standalone. Uh, but explain pretty, that. It's, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. So we have this awesome, I, I don't know how many square foot, but it's like a giant, just separate alpha area where it's only alpha people can be in there like classes, but it's basically like a super high tech CrossFit. Like we have rings, we have ropes, yep. we have a lot of things that like a normal lifetime wouldn't be able to have, like hanging things from the ceilings. We have turf. Yeah. But then a lot of like the newer clubs newer are clubs, starting yeah. to get things like that and they're having their own dedicated spaces. But at the time we didn't really have that. Yeah. We had just four racks shoved in the corner. Yeah. And at the time I was like, wow, this is awesome. We need that. Yeah. Did you know the so, first studio we built, which one that was? Uh, wasn't that, was that the one in Arizona or no, in Omaha? Omaha, in Omaha, yeah, Nebraska. The court, yeah. Right? And we blew it out in Kyle Kasperbauer who took third at the games a yep. couple of years prior to that was the, the, the main coach. Uh, it was, yep. it was awesome. And then, and then Arizona opened up. Yeah. Um, yeah. The so. alpha one. Yeah. With um, yeah, we wanted to get, and Alpha, so we wanted to at Florham Park. We were trying to push for it so hard, but we just kept getting shut down. We were one of the last clubs to get the floor flip, yep. which that was awesome. Being able to get more racks, we got all the Alico barbells, all the nice stuff. Uh, once we got that, I was like, this is awesome. But and that's something again out there for, for people who you know hopefully are still listening and, and wondering where do I go to work, right? And it's it's we've taken space, literally dedicated space. And then some, some clubs, you know, here out here in Arizona, you know, at the Scottsdale club, they, they actually added on to the building and built a complete room, uh, huge. Um, and then, you know, there's racquetball courts in some cases there's standalone. So there's all these different places that literally help you have the space and the dedication and the right equipment to do the things that, you know, you want to do in that, in that category of working out. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. So after that certification, I get back super stoked on alpha. Uh, at that time I was able to run alpha certifications. So I did about two or three certifications and the whole time I'm just like, as a group training coordinator, I'm like, what's my next step? What do I need to do next? Mm -hmm. And I had a good relationship with David Freeman at the time. I'd met him multiple times. He was the one that ran the master certification. So he was kind of one of my big mentors throughout this whole process. So I reached out to him. I was like, hey, do you know any opportunities? Like, how can we blow up Alpha? Is there any way we can get Alpha studios in New Jersey? Those kinds of things. And he was like, nothing right now, but I'll get back to you. Yeah. And then a few months later, he did get back to me. He was like, hey, well, I don't know if there's anything really near you, but we have this interesting opportunity at Chan Hassan, our corporate club, uh, with their alpha studio. Would you want to come to Minnesota and do that? And 
I had to think a little bit, uprooting my life and going a thousand miles away to the frozen tundra of Minnesota. Yeah. But it was exciting to me at the same time because at the time, all the roles, like I was saying, around me were filled. So I didn't know where I was going to go next. So I decided to blaze my own trail and make my own route. And plus it aligned with my overall goal, which was to blow up our alpha program, make it something that's nat nationally recognized even outside of lifetime. Yep. But I also want to prove that this alpha studio model is successful so that we can bring it to other clubs and bring it all over every lifetime yeah. Yeah. because yeah. it's something that I'm super passionate about. Yeah. Awesome job and awesome work because it is, it's, it's doing, doing fantastic. And obviously through the pandemic and the way that we've, you know, been able to, to modify, I think it's going to just get even bigger and bigger and bigger. So, you know, just hats off. So, so now the, the Chan Hassan club, so, so people understand is you've got your corporate building and then you've got the, the, the club that share a parking lot. And there was a, a huge extension again, adding on to the building um, to create its own studio. And uh, I just recorded uh, Lindsay Ogden, and she was in it. Uh, it was great. Um, it actually looked like a virtual background behind her, but it was yeah. real. Um, <laughs> I so, should have done this in there in our studio. Oh yeah, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah. So you know, so then you end up coming. You're you're at Chan, and now you're. Are you doing between Chan and mm -hmm. the New Hope, or is it just New Hope? So I was at Chan. So here's another good story too. So I get out here, I'm like ego through the roof. Like I'm <laughs> this super hot, like I'm going to just crush it. Yeah. And I just got destroyed. Like my first few months were just horrible. Like I won't say horrible. Like it was great. Everybody was very welcoming, but I just didn't come in with the right mindset. I was definitely, again, like very ego driven, like very much like I know what's right. I'm going to do all this influence everybody, but they already had a great program. They were the biggest small group training program, which was one of the big reasons why I wanted to come there yeah. uh, was to be a part of that. But they had a good alpha facility. They had a good alpha program. They had a great alpha coach and an alpha culture. And for me to come in and try to change that, that was a huge issue. Yeah. And it hit me hard. And like, you could tell some of my coworkers, like this guy, like, and like, I, I just didn't get off on the right foot. I rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And it, it just wasn't a good first few months. Uh, but once I realized like how, I, I won't say poorly, cause I wasn't doing poorly, but how hard I was getting hit. Um, I realized a few things needed to change. So I, I mean, I had a lot of great meetings with my PT manager, Heather Bachicha. Yep. Shout out to her. She did really great. I worked under Lindsay for a while. So she did a really good job with my development. Um, but they gave me basically gave me the hard truths. They were like, here's what you're doing. Here's what needs to change. Yep. And that was also when I started to clean up my life. So a few details, a little bit much about my personal life, but I, I struggled with alcoholism a little bit when I first came out here. Um, so I kind of got that under control. I started to really focus on my own personal growth. I started really listening to podcasts, uh, reading a lot of books and listening to a lot of audio books. So I was really awesome. focusing on myself a lot. And I went through this huge transformation and this huge shift. But it was very similar to when I first started out to where it took about six months to really get going. And then about a year to really get on my feet and to really have a good stable business going. Yep. So it took some time, awesome. but once that happened, then things were going great. Things were awesome. I think we had a black Friday. I just blew it out of the water, started getting tons of clients, tons of people into classes. We started blowing up our program. Uh, then not long after uh, we got to kneel at our club as our GTC um, so her and I were kind of like the, the leads going on. So she did all of group training. I did alpha. So yeah. I basically took control of that. So we were like a two headed monster. Yeah. And then not long after she left. So she went back to Michigan and then I became the GTC there. So I took over and a lot of this. So during the first few months of, I think it was, yeah, it was 2019, I basically averaged, I think it was like 10 new joins in our classes per month. So I was just crushing it for like the first three or four months. I was doing most of the driving. 
whereas she was doing most of the managing and she just developed great systems like her meetings were awesome and just really got our programs to like a solid spot yep. so when i took over we were just bumping and we set the record for most small group training participants with 433 unique Ooh. participants in july that's awesome so, in july too uh, yeah. i can't take all of the credit for that but i like to take all the credit yeah. for that <laughs> hey. uh, we, we did have a lot of help yeah um uh, but yeah and july is usually a slow month too but we just yeah. we just had everything going hit the ground running uh, in the meantime i did forget one thing i had a small stint as senior group training coordinator which i mean we we tried to have like three at the time and it just didn't really work out very short-lived yeah but it was great to get a promotion and then they took it away really quickly. <laughs> so um, other than that, uh, after that, then I, I mean, I continued to be GTC for a couple months and then we had some assistants who moved up to PT managers. So again, this was another great club where we just pumped out yep. managers left and right. So assistant manager role opened up. Heather came to me, it was like, do you want this? I was like, yep, this is awesome. This is our next step. And I basically became like a hybrid assistant manager, group training coordinator. Uh, during that stint, I was nominated for artistry two times. Didn't right, get it, right. but two months or two quarters. Um, but otherwise from there, uh, we went through, I was a TDM until 2020. So yeah. Yeah, I think we know the story by yeah. now, but yeah, 2020 starts off great. We, we got all our meetings, we got everything yeah. going. We had a great like Minnesota summit, everybody's ready to rock. Yeah. And then the lockdowns happened. So yeah, COVID hit us pretty hard. And I really didn't do too much during the lockdown. I did write a book. Nice. Uh, no parts here, but yeah. I did. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> What's the name of it, man? Uh, well, it's going to be fitness equals health. Got it. So it's basically just, it's a program that's going to be for beginners to advanced athletes. Anybody can really do it, but it's basically a program just to get you started, get you healthy. And awesome. there's a bunch of workouts associated with it too. So a lot of cool stuff. So congratulations. That'll, that'll be coming more and, 2021. So and, and, I, and I also just, I, I want to stop just a, a second and just say, thank you for being vulnerable, man. I mean, getting past and, and being recognizing some of the stuff in the struggles. I mean, there's, you know, it, it's funny as trainers and, you know, I, I'm pulling the, I've been around for a wild card right now, but I, I've seen a lot of it. And, you know, a lot of times everybody thinks that trainers are always never eating anything bad and, you know, never doing anything bad. And, we all have, you know, we're human beings and, you know, for you to be able to recognize that and, and overcome that and, you know, you know, use that and be able to recognize that it's, that's, that's tough. That's tough. And so thank you for that. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. so now, now, so then 2020 happens and now you're at new hope uh, just recently. Yes. So I started in August. So as soon as the lockdowns ended, so another, another kick to me, uh, after the lockdowns ended, just, we had to downsize a little bit. We got rid of our assistant manager positions temporarily. They're back yeah. now, especially yeah. at Chan. They're one of the best clubs yeah. now coming back. But at the time I had to become a trainer again, had to build a business again before the lockdown. I literally had one client and a couple classes. <laughs> yeah. So I literally, I had to build pretty much from scratch again. Yeah. Thankfully, I did have a few virtual like clients that I kept in contact with and they would have trained with me if I was able to take on clients. So I had them as virtual just to continue to work with them. Mm -hmm. So once I was like, hey, I'm accepting clients again, they were like, awesome, let's do it. So that at least got me going, but it was tough. And just coming out of the lockdown, you have so many people, so many excuses. Like we, yeah, we were running at like a very low capacity. So I was grinding, I, I was doing what I could. And then all of a sudden I heard that, well, Heather calls me as I'm finishing up a golf round. And nice. she's like, we have this awesome opportunity for you. I think it would be perfect for you. And it ends up being the, the New Hope PT manager position. Awesome. So as I'm researching it, I'm very hesitant 
coming into it just because one, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Uh-huh. So you yeah. don't know what's going to happen. They just lost like two of their uh, three, actually all of their best trainers, pretty much. Um, they ended up starting their own businesses and doing their own thing. So it, it looked like it was going to be a challenge. It, it almost seemed like a sinking ship at first. But then as I did more research, as I started like visiting the club, meeting everybody, doing everything I needed to do along the side while I'm getting ready to interview, I started to be like, this is going to be awesome. I'm super excited for it. Interviewed. uh, And then there were a few other candidates. The interview process took a while. Again, another thing of patience there. Uh, But then I finally got it. And I, I come in here, and again, it, uh, I won't say it was a sinking ship, but things were not going great. People were very hesitant. I mean, everybody had connections to those trainers that left. Yeah. So they, they, and again, using the pandemic as an excuse, it's just like, I don't want to go back. Yeah. So it was definitely tough, but thankfully, we have like two other really good steady trainers that were here. So we had those, and then along the way, we started to hire a couple new good trainers, Pilates instructor. So before we just locked down again, things were looking great. But thankfully, we have all of our video and virtual training. So basically, everybody is keeping everybody. We just have to wait until we open back up again. You know, in in, you know, your... uh resourcefulness man is is evident um in in everything that you're saying here and you know something else i think that a lot of trainers don't do and and please take this tip you know this tip is is you did your research man you, you didn't just jump into it a lot of times people will just jump right into whatever's next and whatever's um but you again you said you went in there and it's almost like you were interviewing them as much as as they were interviewing you um mm-hmm. to see if it's a right fit and and doing what you're doing so hats off again and then and you know i, I think the last thing i'd like you to discuss because there's so many trainers especially trainers that have you know that have you know seven eight ten exp- ten years experience plus that are so hesitant to go virtual, you know, and, and whether it's because, you know, it's, you know, the technology and they use that, like you said, they use that as an excuse. It's funny because a lot of these same trainers, they, they yell at their clients for all the excuses that they get from their clients. But yet when there's this skill that can really change the game and and allow you to make money during a time that it's hard to make money first and foremost, but, and and survive Mm -hmm. it. But secondly, you know, expand your business and, and expand your ability to make more money with, you know, once you do the work with potentially less time, you know, on the online side. So, you know, what was your mindset there and what have you had to do? And, and then I have to give a plug to your client, Susan, who's just, I remember (laughs) her when I was at Chan, uh, God, she, you got to yep. just give her some plugs and, and some of the stuff that she does is just ridiculous. And I've yeah. seen she's her a Highland games thrower. So oh, like wow. the Scottish games with yep. the kilts. Yeah, and she's, she's a little thing those, and she's a she's tiny, tiny thing. Man. But yeah, she's a beast. <laughs> yep. So. so let's go into virtual and then we'll talk about Susan and we'll kick it off. So thanks. Yeah. Man. So virtual training. So there's a lot of points here. Give me a sec to gather my thoughts, but We'll, we'll just go a little backstory. So like when I was doing the whole, like listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, a topic that always came up was like online training, online business, even like looking online, like going through social media, it was there. And I heard these podcasts with famous people like Ryan Fisher, for example, who has most of his business online, writing programs and training people online. So I knew it was a thing. And then Lifetime partnered with Trainerize, yep. and we started using that as our platform. And I hopped on that right away. Like I got an iPad right away, like ditched the clipboard using the iPad. Yeah. And I thought it was awesome. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I stayed with Lifetime and why I liked being at Chan was because we are like way ahead of the game and we have all the like money and resources that we need to, like I, I couldn't afford that on my own. Yeah. Well, lifetime can so yeah. great to do that. <laughs> yeah. So but it's it's a truth, man. It it, it is, and, there, and that's again why I like it because I get to test all these things out. And being at Chan, Chan across the street from corporate, is our pilot club and our tester club. Yeah. 
So we got virtual training first and coming from New Jersey, where I said, we got our platforms, everything last. <laughs> yes. This was awesome because I'm so ahead of the game. And even now, now that I'm away from Chan, just being in Minnesota, like I'm still getting everything first and I'm still getting to test everything out. And Lindsay is calling me like, try this for GTX. And like, yeah. that's what I love about what I'm doing right now is I get to try these things first. But I started using the virtual platform at first. I just practiced with my clients, like just getting used to it. We'll do our one or two days together. And then I would give them their workouts on their own and basically use that as my practice. So like message them, check in on them. How'd the workout go without me? What'd you like? What do we need yeah. to change? And I developed my skill set there. But it was cool because I could build my personal training business. And then if people couldn't afford personal training, then I would just bring them to the virtual training, which just a little prep is the virtual. We're talking about virtual programming versus like the yeah, video I, training. Yeah. I call it online. Online is when you're sending the programs out, they're doing it on their own, mm -hmm. you know, virtual is kind of through a camera. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say online was where we started. So that's how the app went. So more of like the online programming, I built a bunch of clients. There was one point, I think I had like 23 people connected there as well as my client base. And it was really good because as a manager, I had limited training hours. So I could only train a certain amount of hours, but I could continue building my virtual base. Yep. And I think it was like every six people was like an hour. So I could have like three or four hours, which I did uh, and not really cut into my time, which was great. So I, I saw the opportunity there. Um, I mean, for the whole time, I was just hoping that Lifetime would allow me to go outside of Lifetime, which yeah. I don't know if I can say it might happen soon. Yeah, but, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which that I'm super excited for. But I always saw that as like an eventual opportunity, something that we could do later down the road. And, and for those uh, that are, are trying to decipher what we're saying there is that Lifetime's offering a virtual membership coming up that allows trainers that and, and members that are not members at Lifetime um, allow those trainers to actually work with those members outside of the four walls through the virtual platform. Yeah, which has been a big no-no for a while. Yeah. So that's super exciting because I've had people like message me through social media like hey can i train with you and i'm like oh not really yeah, or, yeah. we'll figure something out yeah. and then it just never <laughs> works out yeah um but also uh, like throughout the whole lockdown once that happens like we were furloughed so we couldn't legally work with anybody and i, I kind of took that as time off i didn't want to work with anybody but I did a lot of research at that time and I was looking into all different avenues, figuring out what I could do, what I should be doing. Like I thought about starting an online business. I start, I thought about doing all my everything. And like I researched like Trainerize and all that. And you have to like really pay for those platforms. And like, I, I thought about like, I even like for like Lindsay, I gave her a couple workouts through Excel and it's just yeah. not the same experience as it is through Trainerize. And like through doing that with my clients, I was like, this is all, like, if I could offer this to people outside of Lifetime, like yeah, it's a it's no a game changer. It's like yeah. such a great value. So again, the fact that we're going to be able to do that is amazing. Yeah. But I started seeing Zoom calls and Zoom and video classes and all this. I didn't get into it originally, but I know a lot of people that did. And I saw it and I started doing like, just like video conference calls and things like that, just to like get experience with it. And then once we opened back up, Amber, uh, uh, like all the big wigs from corporate came and just talked to us and was like, we need to figure something out if this happens again. Yeah. I know you guys were big on virtual, which I wasn't. I just posted yeah. a lot on my Instagram <laughs> a lot. So I guess I was out in the open and people saw me, but some of the other coaches in the room uh, they had been doing the classes and they had been getting the experience. And we were like, we need to have this because we still have members that are not comfortable coming in the building. And at the time we didn't offer it, but very shortly after we offered it, um, one, one of my best clients, Ellen Zwiefel, who I know you work with, yep. uh, she has her own home gym and she was like, I don't feel comfortable coming in. So we started video training sessions right away. Um, and it wasn't until like a couple months ago uh, maybe like, I think it was September, October, we started offering the 
video classes or the virtual classes, yeah. which now that's awesome. Yeah. But yeah. we have the virtual training, the virtual classes, we have all of that stuff now. And I, I mean, I, I had a feeling this lockdown was coming. I, I knew it was going to happen. So I definitely really made it a point to, to get experience with it and to try awesome. it out and really get into it. So that when this did happen, I was just yeah. like, okay, here's what we're doing. Told all my clients like, okay, we're going to continue to work together, but we're going to shift to video training. What do you have at home? We'll be creative. Um, we're going to go to an endurance phase, low, low weight, high yeah. rep, all that stuff. Um, but we're not going to lose any of our gains, especially like we were talking about Susan. She was worried because we literally, we were at like two reps. We were about to test our one rep maxes the next yeah. week, shut down. And then she's like, but I don't want to lose my gains. But and, and, and by the way, people, she's a Highland Games thrower and uh, we won't divulge her age, but sh she's not like 30 years old. <laughs> uh, I mean, she's you know, uh, she's just amazing, man. I, I remember seeing her. So congratulations to that too. And yeah. her, uh, as well. Yeah. She's so, crushing it. Uh, and Ellen's pretty strong as well. Uh, yes, <laughs> so, she is. so awesome, man. Well, you know, I can't thank you enough. Your, you know, your story is, is fantastic. I mean, you, you've had some ups and downs and, and honestly, that's what life's about in, in overcoming those th suckers and, you know, feel so much better, uh, at the end when you're doing that. And I know you're still, striving to get even further. So uh, hats off to you and, and thank you. Anything else you want to leave the, the team in, in the, the audience with? Well, you said it before, patience is always good. Um, but if you ever want anything, ask for it or ask how you can do it. Because most people, and uh, this is something I do love about Lifetime is we are, and you said I'm very resourceful, but we are resourceful and we have all the resources. And that's, again, what I love about this place. But if there's ever anything that you want, ask for it. Don't be afraid to do that. Nothing's ever too ridiculous to ask for. And we'll find a plan. We'll figure yeah. something out or some way to get you to that goal. Awesome. So, and what's your Instagram handle? Just so people know too. It is DJZ Training. DJZ, DJZ Training. Uh, yep. Perfect. So at so, DJZ training. training. Perfect. So like them, follow them, and you're going to have to do some type of uh, dance, dance, <laughs> you know, Instagram at some point Maybe one day. in time. Maybe uh, one day. So awesome. Well, thank you again, man. And best of luck to you and anything that I can do to help you. Please, please don't hesitate to reach out. I uh, really appreciated the conversation. Tell everybody over there. I said hello and can't wait to get in and, and get a workout with you at some point in time here. Awesome. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, man. Have a great day. You too. Later.